So welcome to another Thursday Thought. So AI is obviously a hot topic, um, and I recently spoke at a conference where I spoke about some of the practical use cases of AI on shop floors. Um, and I'd like to share with you some of the examples that we've actually implemented at some of our customer sites. Um, before diving into those examples, I just want to talk about the four types of AI that I think are relevant within manufacturing. The first one being computer vision. Uh, within computer vision, we've actually got two different uh, uh, types of computer vision. The first one is what we call object detection. This is, for example, what's used in self-driving cars, uh, where the car is able to detect different objects like um, traffic lights, different cars, dogs, cats, people, etc. Um, the other type of computer vision is classification. So this is pretty simple where we teach uh, a model what is a cat, what is a dog, or what is a part in place, what is not a part in place. Uh, and the model is able to determine if it's a cat or a dog or a part in place or not. The second type of, uh, the second two types of AI are really centered around data. So this is what I call predict anything and the other one is called prescriptive. So within predict anything, the idea is to use historical data, build a machine learning model that helps us predict and forecast the outcome. This could be used for production output, for quality, for OEE, for part delivery. Uh, there's many use cases of um, forecasting models that are available. Um, the next one is what, what I would consider the holy grail. This is prescriptive AI. This is where we actually take some data and using the data model that we've created, we actually determine the specific parameters of a machine to determine a specific outcome. So for example, if we want to improve quality, the model will actually drive parameters within that machine to improve quality or it could be used for output. And then the other type of uh, opportunity is the big talk around uh, generative AI, obviously ChatGPT being a hot topic at the moment. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this because I think there's many uh, opportunities and uh, content out available on the internet that speak to the opportunities with generative AI. So let's just dive into computer vision. So the first, uh, the first example I want to share with you with regards to computer vision is here you see a, uh, an axle uh, assembly line and on this axle assembly line what's critical is that we tighten all four dust cover bolts in the right sequence. In addition to that, before the operator turns the axle around, we want to make sure that this clamp is in place. And we've been able to control this process using computer vision by creating a machine learning model of the bolting tool that the operator uses, as well as a machine learning model of the clamp that needs to be in place. So I'm going to play the little video for you and show you how it works. So as you can see, the operator uh, brings in the bolting tools. You'll see the little uh, red dots. Those are our key points that we've determined uh, for the bolting tool. And if the operator puts the bolting tool in the wrong position, we switch off the bolting tool. So they're not able to make uh, a mistake. And once all the bolts are tightened, we then obviously confirm that all the bolts are tightened and we would then display to the operator that it's now okay to put the clamp in place uh, and rotate the, the axle around. So as you see, we've detected that it's okay, clamp in place, we then allow the operator to turn the product around. So this, is, this has provided significant savings for our customer in that if uh, we are ensuring that the quality is, is, is adhered to when it comes to tightening. Also one of the big advantages are that if one of the bolts fail, we, we know which bolt to rework. We don't have to dis disassemble all four bolts. We can actually just rework the right bolt and that saves a huge amount of time from a rework perspective. And then from a, uh, ensuring the clamp is in place, we actually prevent the axle from falling out and making sure that the clamp is in place before the operator actually is allowed to turn the, the, the part around. Um, the, the next example I want to show you is using computer vision again to detect the bolting controller, but using computer vision in addition to worker guidance. So this is how uh, we use computer vision AI together with worker guidance to really create to the Google Maps for the operator, guiding them what to do. So as you can see, we, we are detecting the operator picking the right components from the right bins. Um, once they fitted the components, uh, the process continues and uh, then the bolting tool is then enabled only when it's in the right position. So when it goes blue, it's in the right position. When it's yellow, it's out of position. And then we, we enable the bolting tool only when it is in the right position. 
And this is an example how computer vision is actually enabling the operator to be more effective, to drive quality, and obviously to improve the performance of the station. So that's a little bit about computer vision. The next examples I want to share with you are really about predicting anything. So this is about using historical data to predict a future outcome. So the first example I want to share with you is about pressing a bearing into a component. So here's an example of a bearing that needs to be pressed into a differential. So this is one of the machines we've delivered to our customer. Um, so here's a little animation of what it looks like to press a bearing into a housing. And while we do that, we actually monitor the force and displacement of the bearing pressing process. So the, the press and force curve looks a little bit like this. And I've indicated in red the evaluation window. So basically what that means is that we want the force and displacement graph to go through these evaluation windows. And only if it goes through those evaluation windows are we confirming that the product is actually okay. However, um, as you'll see, not all parts that go through these evaluation windows are actually good. So what we've done is we've taken um, the 156 uh, uh, curves and created a machine learning model based on that curve and that's what you see over here it's what we call the reconstruction of that curve uh, in red and right next to it you see the blue line uh, which is an actual press force uh, curve that happened in the field and what we do is we do a comparison between the reconstruction and the, the input or the blue blue chart and it's the difference that determines whether it's a good or bad part uh, so this is an example of a good part, and you can see the error is in green. So that means it's actually okay. Over here, you see there's a slight deviation at the end over here, uh, of, of the chart between the red and the blue, and we can set that threshold to determine if that's good or bad. So this is actually showing that there's a deviation from the, the reconstruction for the part that actually went through it. And here, what you see is an, an even bigger error. Uh, so the area between the two charts is, is actually determining the error between ideal and the actual press force. So what we've offered our customer is the ability to, to uh, count the number of anomalies within a given press uh, set. So we could say that we set a threshold of more, not more than 10 anomalies out of 156 parts, or we could set it so that any three anomalies in a row is actually a flag and it can actually stop the process. Um, and this has actually been determined um, to be extremely valuable because we've been able to sort of determine if there's any machining housing, uh, any bearings out of spec, um, or if the machine actually needs calibration. So even though all of the processes were passed from a quality perspective, but using these machine learning models, we're able to predict that maybe there's a calibration required or a, there's a failure in the machining of the housing of the differential, for example, or there's a quality issue of, uh, for the bearings. The, the next example I want to share with you is actually an oil filling machine that we built. Um, so this is a chart of the normal oil filling level. So it should be um, between one, uh, 1,040 milliliters to 1,060 milliliters, more or less. And so you can see this is the normal distribution of oil filling. Unfortunately, what happened due to human error, some of the settings went wrong in the machine and you can see there was a sudden jump where we are now filling over 1.5 liters of oil into this particular product. And so, uh, unfortunately, at this point in time, we actually didn't have a machine learning model in place. However, had we had a machine learning model to monitor this process, um, we would have been able to detect that there was a, an anomaly. And the, the nature of the human error was that we changed the set point as well as the upper and lower limit, so it was not picked up. However, the anomaly detector did pick up that there was a problem, uh, and had we had this in place, we would have saved a huge amount of money and a huge amount of stress in trying to determine what is the impact of overfilling one of these products. The next example is really around using it uh, for predictive maintenance, if you want. Um, so here's an example of uh, a measuring machine, so it's a very complex gauging machine that measures the differential and there's about 15 to uh, 16 measuring probes within this measuring uh, device and one of the measurements is the end-to-end -end measurement of the differential. What happened was due to a burr on the differential one of the probes got bumped and it got bumped and loosened um, a little bit and so every part that got pressed the probe started to move 
And so what happened was it was obviously measuring a little bit more every single time and obviously incorrectly because the probe had actually moved. However, it was still within tolerance. So if you can see, the, although the writing is really small, the tolerance is plus minus one millimeter. But the probe moved within that one millimeter, so it was not able to detect the, in the not okay component because it was still within the range. This is an example of where the customer had built over 80 different parts through the line uh, and then at the end of the checking process realized that it was actually a problem and it took about three to four hours of downtime to actually figure out where was the problem coming from because all the processes were actually showing okay but they were failing parts um, and it was really a, a complex process to try and figure out what actually happened. Had we had a machine learning model monitoring this, uh, this measurement, we would have been able to detect the anomaly within four to five parts um, of actually building. So we would have saved a huge amount of downtime, we would have been able to fault find significantly quicker. And this is a real good example of how using machine learning to monitor parameters of a machine can really enable us to predict when things actually go wrong and actually help us fault find, uh, solve the problem much quicker. Um, the last example I want to give you with regards to data is uh, this. So this is a welding machine and over here we've built a vibration sensor uh, and this vibration sensor actually has a learning mode. So it learns the behavior of the machine uh, from a vibration perspective. We then create a machine learning model that actually runs on the sensor itself. And from that we actually get some pretty interesting output from this machine. So, for example, we can now determine when the machine is actually on and off, or working or not working. And then also, interestingly, we are able to detect when the operator is loading parts. So we see that as a knock and we see that in the vibration profile. And the machine learning model was able to detect that as a different state. So as you see over here, uh, red means the machine is off or idle, green means it's running, and yellow means it's operator loading. So we're actually able to detect operator loading times of this machine. In addition to that, we're actually able to get long-term utilization of the machine, so we can see when the machine is being utilized, how much it's being utilized, so the decision to buy a new machine or continue using the existing machine, just increasing the optimization steps or uh, being more optimal in how you use the machine uh, is kind of reflected in this utilization information. We can also get production output, so we can now count how many parts are being produced. So here you see uh, for the last couple of uh, days from June the 7th or from June the 3rd to June the 7th uh, 19 parts were produced, 26 parts were produced. I can get the average time for each of the parts being produced and then quite interestingly I can actually get the cycle time of every single part produced uh, and that becomes really useful in you know showing uh, production visibility to everybody and all, all this is being done by a small little vibration sensor running a machine learning model that's been taught and learned, uh, that has been taught uh, based off the vibration profile of this unique machine. And this is another advantage of machine learning uh, and applying machine learning on microcontrollers. So that's a little bit about predict anything. And the last example I wanna, sh I wanna share with you is about prescriptive AI. So in this example, uh, we have again the differential as, an, uh, as, a, as, a, as a showcase. And what we need to do for a differential as part of the assembly process is actually to determine the thickness of shim 1, denoted as S1, and shim 2, denoted as S2. And in order to determine that correct shim to set the right backlash, uh, we have to do a number of measurements and calculations. And so you see all of the letters, the D, the J, the Y, the D, the P, the L, and the X are all measurements that are taken on the production line that are used to calculate the right shim. So this is the typical equation that we would use and based off of that uh, we would determine which shims to pick. And what's interesting is that we always have to have a k-factor in this. So this is basically an offset that's determined by the technicians and the supervisors on the shop floor. So they look at the variation of backlash, is it going too high, is it going too low, um, and then they, they set the k1 and k2 values based on instinct. Uh, and based on years and years of experience of using the process. So this is an example of where we still rely on uh, in intuition to determine what these K values are to get the right output on the production line. So what we've done is, uh, and this output is actually a first time through of about plus minus 80% more or less. 
So what we set out to do is actually create a machine learning model to try and predict the right shims. Um, and we've actually built a machine learning model to do that. However, unfortunately, it's only at 70% accuracy at the moment. Um, uh, this shows, and the reason why I want to show you the so-called failure is because prescriptive AI is actually really difficult to achieve. You have to have a lot of data, you have to have a lot of processing power to determine the right model, you have to have the right feedback or what we call reinforcement of the, of the model. Um, and I'm pretty confident the more we train this model, uh, the better and more accurate it will become. Uh, and, and I have high hopes of trying to get it up to 90% first time through. Um, and the reason why I wanted to show you a, an almost failure is to also illustrate that it seems to be very easy in theory to apply prescriptive uh, AI on shop floors. However, in reality, it's a lot tougher than what it looks. Uh, I'd love to get your opinion on uh, some other examples that are uh, interesting use cases of AI on the shop floor. Here's another Thursday thought.